In today's video, we're going to take a look at wastewater treatment. So we'll cover the different sources of wastewater and how we can treat it, so that we can either reuse it or safely put it back into natural water sources, like rivers or the ocean. Let's start with the three main sources of wastewater that you need to be aware of. Domestic, agricultural systems, and industrial. Domestic waste is probably the one that you're most familiar with, as it just refers to household waste, like the water from your showers, sinks, and toilets. As soon as this water gets flushed down the drain, it goes into the sewers and heads for sewage treatment plants, which we'll see later. Agriculture also produces loads of wastewater, particularly in the forms of nutrient runoff from fields and animal waste from farms. And finally, industrial sources refers to things like factories that make and use chemicals. Regardless of the particular source though, all of the wastewater has to be treated to make it safe before we can properly dispose of it. For domestic and agricultural sewage, this generally requires removing any organic matter or harmful microbes, which could pollute the fresh water and pose health risks. In addition to this, wastewater from industrial processes often contains harmful chemicals as well and so requires extra steps to remove them. The next thing that we need to look at is how sewage treatment actually works. The exact steps will depend on the particular source of the wastewater, but here we'll consider the three main steps that are common to most systems. The first step is screening the sewage, where we remove anything large, like twigs or plastic bottles. This is often done by passing the sewage through a mesh that only lets the sewage itself get through. The second step is to let the sewage sit in a sediment tank for a while so that it can undergo sedimentation. This is where the heavier solid bits in the mixture sink to the bottom to form sludge and we're left with the lighter part called the effluent at the top, which we can then separate into two separate tanks. The final stage is to break down all of the organic matter, and for that we rely on biological breakdown by microorganisms. The key difference between the two tanks though is that the effluent is under aerobic conditions, while the sludge is under anaerobic conditions. We can achieve this by pumping air into the effluent tank, which supplies oxygen, but then keeping the sludge tank sealed so that there is little or no oxygen. This means that the microbes in the effluent tank can break down the organic matter by aerobic digestion, but the organic matter in the sludge will be broken down by anaerobic digestion. As long as they are given enough time, all of the organic matter will be broken down, including the other microbes. For the effluent, this means that the water is now safe and we can release it back into the environment. For the sludge though, the process of anaerobic digestion produces methane, which can be captured and then burned as an energy source, while the remaining digested waste can be used as a fertilizer as it's rich in nutrients. In some cases, wastewater can contain toxic substances, and these would have to be removed by additional stages for example by adding chemicals to precipitate out any metals, or using ultraviolet radiation to break them down. As you can probably tell if you've seen our last video on treating fresh water, treating wastewater requires a lot more effort. However, it's still a lot easier than desalinating salt water. This is why some countries, which have a limited water supply like Singapore, rely on treating wastewater for their drinking supplies. That's all for today, so if you enjoyed it then please do give us a like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.